When you think of Swiss trains, you're probably thinking something along the lines of stylish, comfortable and on time. But not all trains on the Swiss railway network are created equally. From the failed Twindex Express train to our train, meet the SPB New Pendolino. Used on international routes to and from Switzerland, this train is often described by the Swiss people as uncomfortable and cramped. So let's find out if there's any truth to this on a journey from München to Zürich. Good morning from München Hauptbahnhof, where the entire station building has been torn down. An entire new railway line is currently being built under the city, and as part of that project, München Hauptbahnhof is getting a major overhaul. Luckily, the side entrances are still open, so we will enter here from the south. Which takes us into this very much temporary looking corridor, where you'll find the coin lockers located. And here I mean coin lockers. There's no way to pay with card for these, so make sure you have a few euros on you, if you wish to use them. They come in a few different sizes, so should fit any kind of bag. But let's continue further into the station and see if we can find some trains. As we walk further into the station building, we pass by some temporary shops, as well as the Deutsche Bahn information and ticket office, which can help you with tickets for this train, as well as other general information. Due to the restrictive nature of the station during construction, it can feel a bit cramped. And there's actually not that many shops open during the construction phase. But one thing this station doesn't lack is connections. Served by pretty much every ICE train type going all over Germany. You can also catch French high-speed TGV trains to Paris. Or one of the many regional operators that run services into München from all over the German region of Bayern. Anyway, I think it's about time we go and find our train. As our train isn't leaving for another 25 minutes, it wasn't shown on the departure board yet. But the Deutsche Bahn app could reveal that the train would be leaving from platform 27. And sure enough, here's Euro City Express 198 bound for Zurich. Our train is even painted in a special livery for this route, running from München, dipping shortly into Austria, before continuing to Zurich. The train is run in cooperation with the three state railway operators SPB, DB and ÖBB. The service uses these stylish Alstom Pendolino trains that SPB provide. They can run at speeds up to 250 km per hour, but we won't quite be travelling that fast on today's route. The external screens help you locate your carriage as well as show journey information. And now I think we're ready to board. I'm travelling in first class today on an interrail pass. And seat reservations are not mandatory on this train. I didn't bother today, so I'll just go and grab whatever random seat I feel like. I think the solo seat all the way at the end of carriage number one will do just fine. We depart München Hauptbahnhof right on time at 6.54. Die Reisenden der Swiss Air Rail nach Zürich und wünscht ihnen eine angenehme Reise. The train crew welcomes the travelers from Swiss Air Rail to Zurich and wishes them a pleasant journey. With 32 mainline platforms, it takes a little while before we clear the complex junctions just outside of the station. We pass by one of ÖBB's new Nightjet sleeper trains, which I was super excited to try for the first time later on this trip. Make sure you're subscribed, as this will be a future video coming to the channel. But enough about other trains. As we're speeding along our route now, let's take a closer look at the route map for today's journey. We are catching Eurocity Express 198 with service from München Hauptbahnhof via Buklo, Memmingen, Lindau Reuten, Bregenz, St. Margreten where our train was scheduled to take a diversion due to track works, omitting the regular stops in St. Gallen and Zürich Flughafen before arriving into Zürich Hauptbahnhof. Today, the journey was scheduled to take 3 hours and 44 minutes to cover the 326 kilometers, giving the train an average speed of 87 kilometers per hour. Leaving München, we run through the misty Bavarian forest where the sun hasn't quite yet penetrated the mist. So instead, let's have a look at the seat which features a nice sturdy tray table, this pretty useless pocket, a movable footrest, a small bin, 
The seat features two power outlets, one Swiss style and one European style. The seat itself is really comfortable with this nice pillow that's really plush. You can also adjust it. The seat itself is fairly supportive and still soft. A really good balance. Although the legroom is actually quite limited for its first class seat. It's not bad, but it could be better. And as we start to clear the mist, the weather gets a lot better. And the line also gets increasingly more scenic. As we navigate the hills and twists and turns that take us down to Lake Bodensee. And before we get there, let's have a look around the train. Up here in first class, you will find seating in a 2 plus 1 layout, mostly airline style seating, but a few table seats as well. There's also information displays, as well as plenty of luggage storage by the doors to the vestibule. In the vestibule, you'll find even more luggage storage, useful for skis, as well as the toilet. Continuing on to the next carriage, this one is also laid out in first class. Similar style, 2 plus 1 airline style seating. There's lots of skiing equipment on board today's trip, so I guess many Germans use this train to get into Switzerland and therefore into the Alps. Next up is the dining car, where you'll also find the accessible toilet as well as accessible seating. The dining car wasn't fully open on today's trip, as there was only one staff member. It was only open for takeaway, with snacks, drinks and hot coffee being on offer, which you could get from the booth here. Continuing down, we get to second class, which is probably the most criticized part of this train, as people often say the trains feel really cramped in here, as well as that the seating is too tight. Seating is laid out in airline style seats, with base of forward tables, in a 2 plus 2 layout. So, let's see how cramped these seats really are. They do have the same amenities as the first class seats. And they do look quite comfortable. But the legroom is indeed a bit limited, but I wouldn't say it's totally cramped. Continuing into the vestibule, you'll find similar amenities as in first class, with plenty of luggage storage being available here. This is also where you'll find the toilet. And some rubbish bins. There's also space on board for bikes, but this has to be reserved in advance. And of course, we also gotta do a little toilet review. The door can easily be locked using this knob. Over here we'll find working water, as well as soap, and a working hand dryer. The toilet is looking clean, and the flush is working, so SPB, this gets a thumbs up. I also really like the internal maps showcasing journey information. It's simple, clean and intuitive. So yeah, I can see why you might think the legroom is a little bit tight on board these trains, but honestly I don't think it's that bad. Maybe if you're doing a really long journey up to Frankfurt on board one of these, but otherwise, I don't really get the fuss. I think the seats both in second class and up here in first class feel plenty comfortable, and that's all the amenities I'd expect from a long distance train like this. But let me know what you think down in the comments. Here we are arriving into Lindau Reuten, our last station stop in Germany. After a brief crew change here to Austrian drivers from ÖBB, we continue our journey into Austria. And as we make our way across this river, we have officially entered Austria. As we're within the European Schengen zone, there's generally no border checks, and soon enough we're coming up on our only station stop in Austria. Which is the town of Bregenz, also located on Lake Bodensee. And after our brief stop here, we now continue onwards towards Switzerland. We cross into Switzerland just a few moments later, as we cross over this river. In St. Magreden, we switch to Swiss Crew and continue our journey along the lake on our diversion route. 
The Swiss train manufacturer Stadler has a large presence in the area surrounding St. Margreten, and here we pass by some of their new trains for the Tyne and Ware Metro in the UK are waiting to be delivered. The diversion we are on is mostly single tracked, so we also have to fit in with the schedule of the regular trains on this line. These SPP Pendolino trains also feature tilting technology, which makes the train lean slightly into curves and thus allows them to travel at higher speeds through them. Which can really help cut journey times on older routes with more curves, like München to Zurich. Eventually our train makes it back to the regular route and making our schedule stop at Winterthur. Thanks to the diversion route taking slightly longer than the direct route via St. Gallen, we will skip the stop at Zürich Flughafen, which the train usually makes. And as we'll soon be in Zürich, it's about time we talk about tickets for this train. They can easily be bought online on the SPB, ÖBB or Deutsche Bahn website and start from as little as 29 euros if booked in advance. Prices vary based on time of booking and demand, so the earlier you book, the better the price you'll get. And as we approach the tunnel entrance that will take us to the underground platforms at Zürich Hauptbahnhof, my final thoughts are these trains are plenty comfortable for the 4 hour ride between Zürich and München and I would happily travel on them again. But let me know in the comments what you think of this train. Does it look cramped to you? Anyway, here we are at Zürich Hauptbahnhof right on time. Thank you so much for joining me on this trip. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you're subscribed to the channel as I try to upload a new one every Sunday. You can also follow me over on Twitter at InterCitySimon. I usually post live for my travels over there, so it's a great place to get a sneak peek at what videos might be coming to the channel in the future. Thanks for watching.